Hi there. In this video, we'll learn about the connection between the first order condition and the expansion path. Just to remind ourselves about the expansion path, it is a certain path that shows the connection between various equilibria of a firm. Here we have labor on the x-axis and we have capital on the y-axis and we can see that there are various ISO cost lines. First one is AB, the second one is CD and the third one is EF. And we have two ISO quants here. The first one is Q0, uh, Q1 and the other one is Q2. So you can see this is the first equilibrium and this is the second equilibrium. This is not an equilibrium though it's a certain value that exists but definitely doesn't show the tangency. We have studied this in the theory that the tangency actually gives us the equilibrium and not the intersection of the isoquant and the isocost line. So here we are, uh, we have this expansion path which is a straight line. It means that there is a constant value of the ratio of capital and labor because if you consider this point and this point if we divide capital and labor here capital and labor here it will be equal uh, to each other because the uh, answer of these two points is showing that their ratio is the same this will happen if there is another isoquant here that is k3 and l3 when we divide them we get a certain value and that certain value will also show that the ratio is the same that is if the answer of this k1 over l1 is 2 the answer of k2 over l2 will also be 2 and if the answer of k3 and l3 is calculated again it will be equal to 2 so the same ratio is going to give rise to this straight line which is actually the expansion path the expansion path can be uh, a kind of curve that can take more than one wiggles but right now we are considering a simple example where it is a straight line. So basically if we turn our attention towards the mathematical background of it, it is basically showing us the comparative static aspect because in the comparative static analysis we have the option of comparing two static points which in this case can be this equilibrium and that equilibrium and this equilibrium so there are a few equilibria here that we can compare with each other and they are static equilibria since the dynamic dimension is not there so the comparative static aspect of the producer equilibrium can be considered with the help of this diagram and with the help of a certain branch of mathematics which is known as differential calculus. Then we have uh, with fixed ratio of PK and PL we already have seen this demonstrated this that the ratio of these two points and the other two points and so on will be the same and that depicts that the postulate successive increases of uh, Q ascent to higher and higher isoquants. So as we go to higher isoquants, for example, Q1, Q2, and somewhere here will be Q3 and Q4, it will show the same uh, ratio of the capital and labor. So a slight difference should be noted that here the ratio is not just of capital and labor, it is also of the price of capital and price of labor. So this is also considered to be constant. So no matter the higher isoquants occur, the ratio of the prices will also remain the same. So this ratio as we already have observed that it will be the same because as we go ahead the straight line is the consequence of the same value that will show their ratio and each shift will give rise to a new point of tangency with a higher isocost just like we saw here a new point giving rise to another equilibria and the isocost line is higher as well as the isoquant and the locus of such points of tangency is the expansion path this is the locus or the root of these points starting from the origin so we get the 
expansion path now we can do this by the uh, use of uh, first order condition we remember that the first order condition is equal to this and that is the point of tangency of the isocost line and the isoquant and at this point you can see that the slope of the two curves is the same because the slope of a b that is the isocost line is as it is it's uh, negatively sloped and the slope of uh, q1 that is the isoquant at this point in other words is the tangent so you see the tangent is automatically equal to a b that is the isocost line so since it's a curve and it can have different slopes for example here it will have a higher slope we can make a tangent over here and we can make a tangent over here as well and that will give us a lower slope so at this point the slope is exactly equal to the slope of a b curve so these uh, two values will be the same p k over p l is the slope of the isocost line and MPA K over MPL is the slope of the isoquant, the ratio of the marginal products of labor and capital. So we start with the standard form of a production function. It is this, that is Q is equal to A K alpha L beta. This is actually the Cobb Douglas production function. So MPK is equal to this, that is the derivative of the production function with respect to capital and this will be the answer of it and MPL is there it is also equal to the derivative but this time with respect to labor and this will be the result of it we know how to take the derivative so we have done this it is done symbolically substituting in condition now the values of MPK and MPL are found and we can put them here after substituting cancelling out a few things we have got the answer which is equal to this so we can say that it can be written like this and finally if I want to get the value of K over L that is the capital to labor ratio it will be equal to this because we were eyeing the capital to labor ratio here it's an uh, important variable because in the real life it can also tell us about if the answer for example is 5 it means that every unit of labor will have one uh, will have 5 units of capital so this is why 5 over 1 2 over 1 means that every unit of labor has 2 units of capital so you see at equilibrium it will be equal to this this is the value of uh, capital to labor ratio alpha is a parameter beta is also price is fixed and PL, pl and pk both of the prices they are there they are the same so when they are not changing it means that the capital to labor ratio will also remain the same this is why in the diagram we observe that they remain the same they give rise to the same values now answer will be numerical as we use various numerical values of alpha beta pl and pk so the answer will be a constant value and this is why we have a fixed input ratio that will give rise to a straight line in the expansion path which will originate from the origin so another uh, finding that we can extract from here is that it is the homogeneous production function as we know that Cobb Douglas production function is homogeneous so this homogeneous production function is going to give us a straight line expansion path this is another lesson that we have learned from this so this was about the um, expansion path which was a straight line this was the mathematical evidence of it this was a little bit of explanation and this is the diagram of the producer's equilibrium using which we have understood that how the first order condition from calculus can be used to mathematically understand this concept and make it concrete thank you